Hey everybody, M Stone three two six. Thought I'd make a, a couple videos on how to make a matching game. Uh, looking at one of my old projects from years ago when I first started on Scratch, uh, we made a matching game and they shuffle. They always go to a random spot. Works just fine. The kindergartners, first graders like it. They like to see the ice cream and the heart and whatnot. Okay, so it works. All right, there's no problem with uh, the functionality of the problem came with how I made it and looking at oh I got a match looking at this down here I have a sprite times two for every letter of the alphabet for every sprite so there's two apples two zebras two whatever's and a control sprite and then the, this blue sprite that I forget what it even does so looking at this project I have 54 sprites I have a little bit of code on my backdrop the problem is 52 of the sprites all of the cards have the exact same repeating code over and over and over and the only difference is what it's called here when it's picking its place and what we set the variables to here so cat 1 switches cat 1 and then cat 2 switches cat 2 and looking at this project, that, this was a daunting, see this is cat 2 for the placement. This, this was a tough one. This took forever. And there's really no reason to have all this repeating code. And I've learned that through about five or six years of Scratch now. And as well as learning other programming languages like Python. That whenever you see repeating code, uh, it's a good time to try to figure out how to do it a little bit more efficiently. So on the user side, this works. Don't even know the difference. On the back side, okay, look inside the project, uh, look, look at the structure. Uh, I think I have 54 forever loops when there really should be only one in the entire project. I have 54 or 55 green flags and there should only be one. So this was a good project to start about six years ago. Uh, but now let's look at a similar type of project. Yeah, it's a matching game. Okay, nice purple cards here, but notice there's only one sprite. So one sprite, and I have my costumes for the different items that we'll be trying to match. I have my card costume, which is named card, and I have my you win screen called you win. And the idea here is going to be to use cloning. So we're only going to have to write the code once, and then we'll use the ID that we give each item. And we're going to be giving each item the ID of their costume. So every time we make a baseball, the ID for that clone will be baseball. Every time we make a basketball, the ID for that clone will be basketball. And then when we get to the flipping over the cards, we'll just be comparing the uh, card 1 and card 2 IDs and see if we have a match. Okay, so we're going to do all that together. So if you haven't done cloning before or haven't used an ID, don't fret. Okay, we're going to go through the whole thing, but that's how we work with clones, and uh, we can make all of this code and all these sprites from the old project, oh baby, into something that looks like this. Okay, it looks like a lot. It's really not a lot, but at least it's not 54 times, and then this runs this project perfectly. Okay, oh yeah, I added a sound. Okay, so uh, just play it through real quick. Um, the sprites... Well, the costumes will go to a different place every time and oh boy I just figured I'd show you that when we do finish up there's a script that sits and waits for them all to be gone and then it triggers our game over screen okay so we'll take the steps and we'll go through this project together uh, we'll make all this code here uh, you can change it uh, a couple things to note is just the size of my card is 80 by 100. So my numbers on the tutorial part are based on my card being that size. Okay, so if your card is bigger or smaller, then you'll have to change your numbers for your stage accordingly. And you can play around with them and uh, whatnot. So other than that, uh, we should be good to go here. And this is, I will leave the skeleton project, which is this one. Um, in the link of the video so that you guys can get to it. Okay, so let's start off first. We'll just take a look at our 
sprite again. Okay, we have all of our costumes. Okay, so the matchables, we'll call them, are from one to six. The card is costume seven, and you win is costume eight. So when we're making our clones, we don't want to clone any costume greater than six. So when we see that our costume is greater than six, we're just going to set it back to one when we start looping to make our clones. Okay, let's just get the structure down first. Um, always good to only have one green flag in the project. Okay, we don't want to have two or ten or forty. One in the entire project is the way to go. And also, this project, there'll be no forever loops. Okay, nothing will be happening forever. Uh, there'll be one wait until block. But other than that, uh, this is going to be just based on clicking. So what I like to do when I set up my projects is I make sure I have a broadcast for an initialization period. So all of my variables and list items will be reset and put to what they should be. List deleted, list populated, uh, variables set to beginning of the game underneath this right here. Okay, I always have this and that will be the first thing that happens when we click the green flag. Okay. Second thing we'll do is we will set up. This just helps keep your scripts in order too. You can see what's happening and when. Because there are times that you need a costume based upon a variable and if you don't have these in the right order that re will require the double green flag click and whenever you see that you have an issue with the code. So we can always go fix that. Okay, our setup will be uh, basically costumes, uh, placements on the stage, locations, uh, things like that. Sound, volume, and uh, what have you. So, there we go. Okay, that's our start right there. So take a second and set these all exactly like this. And then we'll go on. Okay, so what I'm going to do here first is I'm just going to show... Okay, you again, that we're going to be creating clones 1 through 6. Okay, we're not going to be cloning 7 or 8. Okay, so that's going to be the first part of this. So when we start, our first setup is we want to start on the baseball, which is our first costume. Okay, now we'll randomize this as this project goes on. We'll add in randomization later. Let's just get everything placed and the framework working and then we can add randomization of the placements later on it's pretty easy to do okay so we set up their costume to the baseball then we'll put it at minus 135 125 so I already knew that number I did the math before this setup here is based upon my 80 by 100 card Okay, so you'll see that as, as we place the cards later on. Okay, and underneath the setup, why don't we create our clones here in the setup? I was going to add one more uh, message here, but we'll just make it here for now, and then maybe we'll separate it as we go. Uh, the idea is going to be to make three rows. So it'll be a row here, a row here, and a row here and then four columns one two three four of cards so there'll be 12 total cards in three rows and four columns so we'll have to make our this will be our rows so three rows and then we're going to nest another loop so when you put a loop inside of a loop that's called nesting so it'll do three times it'll say repeat so this will be the first repeat and it will go four times and that will place four here then it'll go up here for the second, it's called iteration, and it will repeat four more times. Then the third iteration, four more times, and then it will be completed. Okay, the run will be done. So what do we actually want to do here? Well, we want to create a clone. After we create the clone, we want to switch the costume. Okay, so that way it will go to costume 2. That way it will be ready for the next clone. We want to move the X position over. So I'm going to change X by 90. And the reason I'm using 90 is because my card is 80 by 100. So by changing it by 90, 
it's going to leave uh, 10 pixels between each card. Okay, and it spaces out pretty nice. But after it does that first row, well, let's run this. See, it, after this is the first row, it just keeps going over. So we need, after this first repeat four, which is nested finishes, we need to bring everything back to the left and bring it down on the y-axis. So what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate this block here because the x of minus 135 is where we should start. And then the y is going to be equal to, we're going to say, we'll go y will be y minus 125. I'm sorry, I'm having keyboard issues. There we go. All right, so let's see how we go here. Okay, not bad. Not bad. You'll see a few things here. You'll see that we are cloning the U-Win screen. We are cloning the card. So we mentioned that before. So let's fix that right now. We'll use an if statement inside our repeat four here. So just as it passes, we'll check to see if the costume is equal to seven. Because we said earlier, costume seven is the card. All right, and once we hit the seven, we need to go back to one. Okay, so if the costume number is equal to seven, we want to switch back to the baseball. Okay, and we'll do that right here. Okay, it would work down here as well, wherever you want it, doesn't really matter, as long as it's after we change the costume. So let's see it now. All right, looks good. Problem, so notice this down here, this is the parent sprite. So the parent sprite is still showing, so in our setup block, we're going to hide him. And sometimes people get a little confused when they do that, because when you hide him in setup and you run it, Ah, now nothing happens because you can't see your clones because the clones are inheriting the hide from setup. So we need to tell the clones using their hat block to show. So if I run this again, all right, that looks pretty good. So all of we have two of each. Okay, we have two baseballs, two basketballs, two beach balls, two soccer's, two tennis, and two orange bouncy balls. Perfect. So that's a pretty good start. Why don't we? Flip them back over though. All right, let's flip them back over so that they are the card. Okay, so as we start as a clone, we're gonna switch it back to the card. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. Now you're probably saying, well, if they're all the card, then how do we know what's what? Well, here is where our ID system comes in. And this will be the first variable that we make. And then after we get them to flip over, I'll stop this video and I'll go on to the next one that's part two. Okay. So let's go to variables and we're going to make a variable. Now, when you're making an ID system, the clones, it needs to be for this sprite only. That way each clone gets a copy of its variable. All right. If it's for all sprites, they'll all see the same single variable. If it's for this sprite only, they'll all create and hold their own value. And when you're working with different types of variables, it can be confusing. Uh, like looking back at this project here, they're all written the same. How do we know which ones are for this sprite only or which ones are for all sprites? So what I do is if it's for this sprite only, we'll make it all capitals. So any this sprite only variable we make in this project will be in all caps. Anything that is for all sprites will be in all lowercase. Okay, we'll press OK here. And we have to initialize our variable ID. Uh, set it to zero, it's not a big deal. And here is the fun. Before we switch to the card, we're going to set each ID of the clone to its costume name. Okay, so let's run that. Now, how do we know if they know that? I like to use these say blocks. 
it's just a good way to see what's going on. Right now, we don't know what they're doing. Uh, we assume that everything worked okay, but let's make them say it. Let's make them say their ID and see if they're actually showing what they are. Yeah, we have a baseball, a basketball, a soccer ball, um, a beat that just beach balls for this guy, tennis ball, baseball. Awesome. So they know who they are, which is perfect. So what we can do now is just flip them back to the card. All right. So they still know who they are, even though they're showing card. They're not going to be a card when we click it. Okay. Let's get rid of that say block for now. That did its job. Always nice to use these say blocks so you can see the values that you might not be able to see uh, if you're not putting them in a list to keep an eye on them. And at this point now, I'm just going to pull this ID out. And we'll make these babies flip over and we'll cut it right there. Okay, we won't do any comparing in this video. We'll just get them flipped and flipped back. Okay, when the sprite is clicked, each clone, when you click it, will respond to the, when the sprite is clicked. Okay. And when it's clicked, why don't we switch the costume to the ID? So when we click it, tennis ball will switch to tennis ball. So ready? Perfect. When we click on the beach ball, it's going to switch to beach ball. It's switching to the ID. So now, why don't we add a little weight block here? And after one second, we can put it back to the card. That way you can see in one second. One second, one second. All right, so we'll stop this one here. All right, we have the cards knowing who they are. We have the cards in the grid. Uh, the cards have their ID. The cards are still saying who they are because I haven't stopped it and rerun the project. So there we go. All right, awesome. So good luck with this part one. Uh, we'll get to part two next where we uh, start to store what we click and compare and see if they're a match or not. Okay, so good luck. Hope this helped.